So you want to know how solar panels are made? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be taking you inside America's largest solar panel manufacturing plant. It's operated by Qcells and located just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. This facility uses all modern, state-of-the-art robotics and automation and is able to put out up to 12,000 solar panels per day. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 12 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean renewable energy. Now, if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge we do product reviews and comparisons on solar panels, batteries, inverters, pretty much any piece of technology that makes up a home solar power system. Now, in today's video we're going to be showing you how the solar panels themselves are actually made. And we're going to be meeting up with Qcells, America's largest solar panel manufacturers, so that you can understand all the key steps in the process. Let's get to the interview. So, folks, for those that don't know, Qcells is the number one, in terms of volume, number one U.S. residential solar panel manufacturer. So chances are, if you had solar installed on your home in the last year, you have a Qcells product on your roof. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be explaining a little bit more about how solar panels are made. How are they manufactured? What goes into them? Because I know it's something that a lot of folks are interested in. Some folks even out there try to assemble their own solar panels, maybe at a small scale, just to understand the, the basic concepts of how it works. So let's start out, for those that are interested out there, what are the basic components that make up a solar panel or a solar module? Yeah, sure. Let me try to uh, give you some idea about it. So definitely the main and the important component is the solar cells in the solar panel. Uh, so that is the part which is going to absorb the sunlight and convert it into the DC power. Now, since you have just one solar cell is not enough, so you have to have many solar cells in the panel. These solar cells, like right now, the panel we have here is the Qtron one, the latest one which has come out. It has uh, the half-cut cells. Now, these half-cut cells are put together in strings and you have these bus bars which are connecting these cells. And what it is doing is basically this bus bar wires are accumulating all that power or the electricity which is getting generated. And you are having this major one over here in the center going through uh, where everything is coming at a central location. Now from there, on the rear side, you have something called as junction boxes or the diodes. The junction boxes are the ones in which you have diodes. So uh, as I was mentioning, on the front side, we have the uh, bus bar, the central location, where everything is getting accumulated in a way, basically. And from there, you have these three junction boxes in which you have three diodes. And that is where you have this positive and negative, you can say, basically, sorry, the other way around, the positive and the negative side on the, uh, of the output coming out from the panel. Uh, obviously, you have the glass on the front side. Sometimes, uh, this is what you call the back sheet. Uh, sometimes in the commercial or the utility modules, very wide scale, now this back sheet has been replaced with a glass. So you can also find glass on the rear side. Uh, we call this as the rear side of the panel. And you have this aluminum frames to basically secure, uh, secure the uh, glass, the solar cells, the back sheet, uh, all that material together. Now, that's the high level view of what all comprises a solar panel. Great, great. So we have the solar cells themselves, right? That's the main part. Convert sunlight to electricity. You connect multiple cells together to get to a, I guess, a, a enough or a significant enough current and voltage that it becomes a power source. Yeah. And then you have your positive and negative terminals that come out here. So this almost looks like a, like a battery, right? You've got your positive and negative leads, right? And so this is what's sending voltage or sending electricity out into the rest of the system. That is correct. Okay. Now this is the back sheet here where she said kind of holds everything together and then of course the aluminum frame which kind of gives it the, the mechanical stability. stability, right, and the ability to, to, to use then to attach to the roof. So could you walk us through, as these panels are coming off the assembly line, what are the major milestones or what are the major steps in that manufacturing process? Could you kind of just like walk us through the order of things? 
Yeah, so you, you, you start with the solar cells. Uh, as I said, these are half-cut cells. So most of our modules which we are producing right now are all half-cut technology cells. So what happens is when the cells are brought to the facility or they're coming out of the cell production, they are full cells, uh, full square cells right now. Uh, now people might comment that there are rectangular cells and everything, it's, it's there. So uh, nowadays even people, like there are trends where you see rectangular cells as well. But no matter it is square or rectangular cell, uh, you usually have half cut cells. So what happens is the first step is you will have uh, the cell cleaving where you are cutting that full cell into half cell. Uh, those half cells are basically put in a string format. Uh, then that stringing happens and those strings are now aligned together uh, on uh, the back sheets. The back sheet and the glass on the top come together, they go through lamination process where the back sheet, the encapsulant, I didn't, for, uh, I didn't mention encapsulant before, the reason is because you will not be able to see it up front, but what it is doing is it is basically uh, creating that vacuum seal for the solar cells to be in. So it is dust proof, it is rain waterproof and all that. So the sandwich of glass solar cell and capsulant and the back sheet all together goes through lamination process where uh, it is all glued together and from there you have this uh, cutting you are cutting the edge to make it cleaner neater fine kind of then the frames are put together on it then you have the junction boxes coming in from the rear side junction box lids are put together and finally, when everything is okay, you have a couple of, uh, throughout, throughout this process, you have many quality checkpoints. But at the end, the important one is something called as flashing the module. So what you are doing at that point is now the module is ready. And now when you flash it, you are able to understand what is the voltage, what is the current, what is the actual power class of this module at standard testing condition, what will look like. And once everything is done and uh, everything is tested out correctly as we intend from the manufacturing process, then the label is applied over here that, okay, this panel is now 420 watt panel. So that's how the entire process looks like. Excellent, excellent. Because I know oftentimes when we look at solar panel data sheets, we see that it's not a specific power rating, but it's a, it's a range, like it might be 400 10 watts to 440 watts. And so I guess you're saying after this flashing and we see what the actual number is coming off, then that's when they're stamped with whatever the official rating is for that batch. Yeah, so uh, Q-Cells uses something called as positive binning. So what that means is if the flashing says 421, then from zero to 4.99 is considered as one power class. So what that means is 421 will also be labeled as 420 watt panel. But once it reaches 425, that is when it, it basically gets the 425 logo or 425 power label, sorry for logo. Uh, so basically what we are trying to do is on the data sheet, we estimate that this is what our production process will basically be able to give as an output and once you are flashing it, that is when you actually are able to put the label to it that, okay, this is a 420 or 425 watt panel. Makes sense, makes sense. So the manufacturing process is pretty much the same. How it tests on the end of the line determines how it gets stamped, whether it's 420, 425, 430, and yeah. so forth. Yeah. Great. So Harsh, from what I understand, pretty much the entire process is automated right now with, with robotics. Has it always been this way? No, I, I feel like uh, we are one of the good, uh, we have one of the good state of the art facility in Dalton where we have done a lot of auto automation. We have tried to automate as much as we can and we are still automating it further to gain that higher efficiency product uh, coming out of the line. But in, it's not been that, that automated process throughout. It's a 
it's there, but it's not completely there yet. We are still working on few more things to make it automated. But yes, right now, um, I would say we have one of the good state-of-the-art facility. Cool, cool. And, and what would you say would need to happen to, to reduce costs further to make solar panels even more affordable? I mean, I know even just the time I've been in the business, the price is probably half, you know, on a price per watt basis, half of what they were when I first got into the industry. But what would need to happen on the manufacturing side to lower costs even further? Um, I believe there are many different uh, factors which will help uh, throughout to reduce the cost further. I'm pretty sure it's always one of the things is volume, right? If you are able to mass produce at a higher volume, your cost drastically goes down because your raw materials buying gets cheaper. So that is one aspect to it. Uh, so basically what I am trying to say is if the demand is higher and the production numbers are higher, then definitely the cost reduces in general. That's the whole idea behind it. And uh, from the, uh, the other factor can also be where you are trying to automate it even more. So if you are able to automate even more, what it does is it is reducing the margin of error. So basically the yield or the throughput of the line will also be higher and that way you are not scrapping more. Once you are reducing that scrap or waste in the manufacturing line, that means you are able to gain uh, the full, full, uh, full cost towards just the module production and not wasting any money. So that is another way you will be able to gain uh, a much more cheaper manufacturing costs. Um, those are a couple of the ways that I can say like on top of my mind right now. Uh, obviously there are a few more of those, but yes. So Harsh, how important is sustainability for Q cells in their manufacturing process? And do you expect this, process, uh, this product to achieve EP certification? Yeah, so sustainability is a very important aspect when it comes to Q cells in general. Uh, we all believe uh, very strongly that our products and the manufacturing processes should have much more su sustainability goals, uh, working towards sustainable environment creation. Uh, Yes, there are a couple of things which we are doing right now as a, as a company. We are part of the Carbon Alliance Group and we are also working towards getting the EPIT Ecolabel certification for the Qtron product and also for the XLG 11S product. Uh, those will be the two products which we are working towards getting the EPIT Ecolabel. What that will help us is as a company show our commitment and also our customers help understand how the sustainable products can be made. And as an industry, I think it is much more important for all of us to work towards that goal. Absolutely. And, and what about Made in USA? Why is having this as a Made in USA product so important for Q-Cells? I think in general that aligns well with our uh, US president's uh, ideology or thought process. We all know that climate crisis is real at this point. We are all experiencing some, in some or the other ways, effects of global warming. But as United States, it is very important that we be the focal point or the pivotal, we play the pivotal role in tackling that climate crisis. Now, one of the ways is to become self-reliant. And the, the way to achieve that self-reliance is through how the manufacturing capabilities in USA. So that is what we are trying to achieve, that we should not be dependent on anyone else, but we ourselves start being independent and making the product in USA. So that is how Q-Cells is aligning with, in general, the US president's uh, goal and the government's goal. And also I think that is how uh, the global citizens should look at it from the sustainability and the global warming uh, fighting standpoint. Great. Well, Harsh, thank you again for sharing your expertise and insights here. Uh, and folks, of course, this is a discussion on how solar panels are made with the top US residential solar panel manufacturer, Q-Cells. And uh, we look forward to have more information like this in the future. All right. I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, 
Feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business, or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.